uh, for Korea, very important time is coming up. The presidential election is in like 10 days, is it? It's ninth, right? So 10, 10 days, nine days? Nine days. You're counting down? <laughs> okay. And uh, people keep asking me. Uh, I'm, I'm doing home visits, Deshinbang, uh, for the 53rd uh, parish. And, you know, we're driving around, and, you know, they're sitting in the back, and uh, they keep asking me who they should vote for. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know. I can't even vote. Don't ask me. Uh, who are you voting for? Have you decided yet who your president will be? That's, that's what I thought. But how hard can it be? You got like 15 to choose from. Um, but one thing you should watch out for during the election season are the chameleons, those people who change their color to their surrounding for their own benefit. Uh, especially during the election season, many candidates try to please everyone. Okay. And they will sometimes uh, seem that they have changed uh, their position on certain things, but uh, people don't change that fast. Think about yourself. Think about how much you've changed you know, over the things that you like or things that you don't like. Uh, it doesn't change that much. So don't be fooled, don't be deceived, don't fall for it. Decisions, decisions, decisions. To be or not to be, that is the question. Uh, we make decisions all the time in our life because our life is not a straight path. There are twists, there are turns and the road splits, you know, you have to make a decision. Should I go right? No, right. Should I go left? Or did the road end? And you have to either turn to left or turn to right. Uh, whether you like it or not, you are forced to make a decision. And sometimes when I do home visits, uh, especially because my parish includes I have to drive around a lot. And even with the, with the navigation on, people will try to tell me where to go. Right? And they'll be like, go here, go here. And I'm like, where is here? <laughs> and sometimes they'll be like, we're, we're, we're going and we have to turn, turn right. And, and she'll, be, she'll be saying, oh, 오른쪽으로, 오른쪽으로. <laughs> This is not right. This is left, right? You know that, right? Um, we have to make decisions all the time in life, uh, especially as we grow. We have to choose the college to go to, uh, choose our major, choose our spouse, our residence, where to live what to do, what company to work for, and you have to select a name for your baby. Uh, when our first son was born, I was contemplating between David and Nathan. And I don't know what you like better, but I liked Nathan much better. Uh, because David was too common Korean guy's name in America. <laughs> it's like if you go to a, like a Korean church and say, like, call out David, and a bunch of guys will look at you, and, you know, a bunch of Peters and Davids and Jameses, and, right? Uh, so I wanted to choose Nathan, but David sounded, I don't know, it seemed to be a better name. 
uh, for him. David was much better, I think, than Nathan. So I went back and forth, and, and I wrote down David, and then I raised it, and I changed it to Nathan, and then, and then I gave that paper to the nurse, and she took it, and I changed my mind again. So I tracked her down, and I changed it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm boring you with my indecision right here. You have to make a decision. And the decisions that you have to make, this list goes on and on. And we can't even sum up our life as a series of decisions we make. We are who we are because of the decisions that we made in the past. So how do we make the right decision or at least a wise decision? And from our text today, from our passage today, we learn a very valuable lesson. When possible, shun Sodom and Gomorrah. Avoid Sodom and Gomorrah. Where there is prosperity, sin abounds. Our passage today says that the men of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. This was a well-known fact at that time. Everybody knew that. Sodom was like, you know, the sin city of Canaan. The scripture says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Our problem for Korea is 잘 살아보세. 잘 살아보세. When we as a nation first started this campaign, we were poor. We were really poor. But not anymore. We should ditch this. We should let it go. We shouldn't have this as our goal anymore. We 잘 살아요, 우리. 우리 잘 살아요. Right? 잘 살아보세요. 잘 살아보세요. We are one of the largest economies in the world. Even Trump, the president, U.S. President Trump, says that we are a rich, rich nation and we don't have, they don't have to help us and all that. That we have to pay for thought and all the other stuff things that they are helping us with. But people are still, Korean people are still holding on to this dream of 잘 살아보세. And now it has become a competition to live better than others. You know, we keep comparing with how other people live and what other people have and we, we constantly try to keep up with the Joneses, right? You know, they drive that car. I, I can drive that too. You know, they buy this and I buy that. And Abraham also made some bad choices like Lot did. But it was because of a severe famine that he went down to Egypt. And he lied about his wife, Sarah, that she was his sister, and he almost lost her twice. Uh, Egypt, because of the Nile River, was well known to be very fertile land. And during the Roman time, Egypt was considered the bread, bread basket of the whole empire. So even in today's passage, it says that Sodom and Gomorrah were like the land of Egypt. Egypt was very prosperous land at that time for a long period of time. But the difference between Abraham and Lot, Abraham choosing Egypt and Lot choosing Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, is that... Abraham chose to move down to Egypt for mere survival 
from the famine. He was pushed there. It was a difficult time. If he would have stayed in the land of the Canaanites, you know, a lot of people could have died from famine. But Lot chose Sodom and Gomorrah for more prosperity. Uh, the reason for this departure from each other was because that they were so rich now. Abraham and Lot became so rich. Things were going so great, and they had too much possession to stay together. So Lot was already rich. He had a lot of things. He possessed a lot of things. And he was looking for a better, even better place, even more riches. If you aim for those things, if you live for the worldly riches, you will not know when to stop because you will never be content even when you are rich. So the Bible says, people who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. It is one thing to run from famine and seek shelter in Egypt for survival, and totally another to choose Sodom for more prosperity when you are already rich. We are rich. I've never seen so many German cars in my life. Audi, BMW, Benz. I think I told you before, uh, the, the neighborhood that I used to live in uh, before I came here, their mean uh, income or GDP per year was above $60,000. $60,000. So it was a very, compared to our standard, very wealthy neighborhood. I don't know how I got to live there because my income was not even near that. Right? But I haven't seen all this, you know, fancy European cars. But here, it's like every other car is Audi. <laughs> anyway, we, but I'm not talking about those people who drive foreign cars. I'm talking about every one of us. That everyone in this room, every one of us is rich. About 700 million people in the world, 700 million is 7억, right? 7억. 700 million people do not have access to clean water and do not have enough food. 7억. Our whole nation even, is not even 7천만. 7억. One fourth of world's population do not have electricity. More than 1.3 billion people live in extreme poverty. That's chips hamok, but it's kind of old data. So I think it's less than shibok now, but you get the point. And extreme poverty is less than one point. A dollar twenty-five cents a day, or one dollar twenty-five cents a day. One point three billion. Fifty-three billion. One dollar twenty-five cents a day. One dollar twenty-five cents a day. Nearly one half of the world's population live on two dollars and fifty cents a day. Eighty percent of the world's population live on less than ten dollars a day, or three hundred dollars per month. Which is 30, 34만 원. 
This is not 340만 원. This is 34만 원 per month. 80% of world's population. By the world's standard, we are rich. Tap someone next to you and say, you are rich. <laughs> we are rich. If I ever go back to America, if our family ever moves back to America, it won't be because it is a better country to live in. I'm more concerned about their, their spirituality and the corruption there and uh, persecution against the church. And we do not go after uh, those things. We Christians live by different standards. We do not seek worldly riches anymore. We are, we Korean people, we are already doing so well. But so many people say that, that it is a difficult time. I don't understand. Because our country never lived better. Right? Look back in our history. We never lived better. We should be like, oh, we are so happy. We're so thankful. Oh, we are a rich country now. We should be rejoicing. But everyone says, every, I mean, everyone says, oh, it is a difficult time. It is a recession. And I've, I've even seen those people in construction business say it is a recession. And I was like, you're kidding me? Right. Look around. You go around, this, uh, around Seoul or, or outside of Seoul. There are so many buildings and apartments going up all over the place. There is no other parts in the world with this much construction going on. And people say it is a recession. If you go after worldly riches, you will never be content. The secret of choosing right in your life is letting go. God will eventually lead you to the land, the promised land flowing with milk and honey, but that shouldn't be your goal. You shouldn't live for that. Remember that God led the Israelite people out of Egypt to worship him. We should never forget why God has chosen us and delivered us from sin and from bondage. It is to worship God, to live for his glory. We should live to worship and serve God. That should be our goal in life. We should seek his kingdom and his righteousness first. And all these things in life that we need will be provided for by God. God knows what we need. He will take care of us. Your prosperity will come soon enough. Don't go looking for it. Don't go to Sodom and Gomorrah because it is a better living country. Because they have, you know, higher GDP or whatever. Just be content with what you have. Be content with where you are. Think about ways to please God, not yourself. Many people who migrated to North Korea a long time ago were looking for a place, a better place 
uh, not to live better, but to serve God better. But most people who migrated to South America went looking for riches. And I do not need to tell you that North America is doing far better than the South. In John Bunyan's The Pilgrim's Progress, uh, the Christian comes to this interpreter's house. Our senior pastor, is, he keeps talking about um, the Pilgrim's Progress, and I, I really enjoy it. I really, I mean, he talks about the same thing over and over again, but it is never the same. Okay, he's giving us a new message every time, and and I, I, I and I'm rereading the book in English because he's he's he has generated so much interest in me about this book, and in it, uh, the Christian goes to the the interpreter's house, and one of the things that he he learns from there. He sees from there is, uh, is this, this reaction, this um, uh, behavior difference uh, between passion and patience. Uh, there are two boys. Uh, I don't know if they're brothers or they're just there. Uh, but passion is older and patience is, is younger. And they were told if they waited till next year, they could receive good gifts. And patience was happy to hear that. Wow. Next year, I'll be receiving you know, great gifts. Yes. And he was happy. But passion, on the other hand, could not accept that. Why do I have to wait so long? He began crying and he pleaded, give it to me now. So something was brought for him and he became very happy and he was making fun of patience. Hey, look what I've got. Right. But soon enough that the, his gifts perished and patience gift came later whose gifts lasted forever and he lived happily ever after. Um, we should learn to wait for God to work in our life. God loves you, and God has a good plan for you. Just like God had a wonderful plan, a great plan, a, a just unthinkable, unimaginable plan for Abraham. But his life wasn't, you know, fancy life yet, and he didn't even have a son at that time, but Abraham kept believing in God and in his promise. We should learn to wait for God to bring the blessings that he promised, and we should never live our life looking for those things, going after those things. Do not choose Sodom and Gomorrah in your life. Our pastor, a few weeks ago, he shared with us a good tip to live by. And he said, when he's faced with a difficult decision, I thought, when he said, I thought he would be, you know, uh, you know, going to the prayer mountain and fasting for 40 days or something right, to receive God's answer. Right, but he said it very plainly. He chooses the thing that will not benefit himself. I was shocked. I was shocked first because it, was, it, has not, it, it wasn't something like praying or going to the prayer mountain. Right? But I was shocked because I realized how difficult that decision will be. Because all, all the decisions that we make, what do we choose? We choose something that will benefit us. Right? Right? <laughs> but he said he chooses the opposite. He chooses whatever benefits the other people. Do not choose Sodom and Gomorrah. 
Don't let that be your goal in life. When I was in charge of youth groups back in the, the States, you know, I asked young people, what is your goal in life? What do you want to do? What do you want to do with your life? And most guys said, I want to be like, what's his name? Bill Gates. <laughs> because he's the wealthiest man. He, they want to be rich. That should never be your goal. Being rich or, or succeeding or, or, or anything in that area, don't, don't let that be your goal. Your goal in life, your dream in life, your vision in life should be about pleasing God and about glorifying God. And everything else will follow you. Compare Abraham's life and Lot's life. Compare what happened to them in their life. Compare, just contemplate what happened to Lot in his life. His life became a miserable life. Let's choose right. Let's become like Abraham. And let's not live for ourselves. Let's live that, our success, our prosperity to God. And let's, let's live for God and for his glory. Amen. Let us pray.